This beautiful silver 1969 Camaro Pro Touring Car is no stranger to the V8 Speed and Resto Shop. The first time it visited, our customer was not happy with the high torque big block Chevy engine and the tendency to overpower the stock suspension. At that time, we disassembled the car and installed Detroit Speed Mini Tubs, a rear quadrilink suspension system with a Curry 9 Plus rear axle, and then a Detroit Speed subframe and suspension system up front. We upsized the wheels with some forge line rollers wrapped in Toyo tires and added oversized bare brakes actuated by a Hydrotech hydraulic brake assist unit. And while the customer was happy with the work, he drove it for a while, but then wanted to take it in a different direction. So the most recent time this car came to us, uh, the owner wanted it to be a little more user friendly than it was with the big block in it. Uh, the big block was a lot of fun, but it was you know, an angry big block. I had to drive it that way. It didn't really like putting around. So uh, he wanted something just as powerful, if not more, but reliable. Uh, so then we went to the latest generation of GM V8 with the LT4. Tyler, what are we doing today? We're removing a big block out of a 69 Camaro. What are we putting in it? We're putting in an LT4. Didn't we just finish this car? <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> we did. So at first it kind of bummed me out because I thought that the car was a really nice car when we sent it out, you know, and uh, we, we all really enjoyed the power it made and the sound it made. And uh, I was also very excited uh, because we were supposed to only increase the horsepower and make it a better car than what it already was. He sent us the car with a new mission. Keep the power, but add some refinement. Make it a little bit more reliable and less angry without decreasing performance. This was a tall order, but modern technology provided the solution, an LT4 supercharged V8 engine. We've done many LS type engine swaps into first generation Camaros in our shop, but the LT has its own set of challenges. The LT swap is similar in a lot of ways to an LS because the engine dimensionally didn't change much. Um, there are a few critical things that changed as the motor mount pattern, the exhaust manifold slash header bolt pattern and the bell housing pattern. Uh, fortunately, the aftermarket has been quick to, to come to the rescue with those sorts of things. This particular car, the, the bigger problem was dry sump. Uh, finding room for an oil tank and making that work behind the headlight with the RS system. Dry sump oiling is designed uh, for extreme driving conditions where you're doing a lot of lateral g-force with the car. With a traditional wet sump where the oil's stored in the oil pan, you're pulling a high G in a corner, you're on the brakes real hard, you're accelerating real hard, the oil sloshes to wherever the g-force is going. And what can happen is you can uncover your pickup, starve the engine for oil. By storing the oil in a tall, narrow tank somewhere else outside of the engine, you're reducing the oil's ability to slosh around. Uh, so that way, the oil's the li not the limiting factor in how hard you can push the car. When the car arrived at our shop, we protected it with a badass fender cover. These are custom tailored to fit specific cars and provides wraparound protection while working. This LT4 is rated at 640 horsepower from the factory, but this one is modified with an underdrive pulley system for increased supercharger output and a custom calibration in the ECM. The big block came out and the LT was test fitted. Uh, so, 540 shaft rough big block is out. Uh, next step is get the LT4 in there. Uh, we've got some dirty dingo adapter mounts. We've got some headers that are designed to fit with the LT4 and the uh, Troy Speed subframe. We've got a center force clutch that we got to set up, switch bell housings on. So, we'll see how, how well this actually fits. The basic block dimensions are similar to an LS engine so we knew it would fit with the proper engine mounts, but we quickly learned that we were facing a clearance problem between the back of the fuel injection pump and the firewall. Uh, all right, so we got the big block out, and uh, we test fit the LT4, and we found a couple issues. Uh, one, the injection pump is really close to the firewall, and two, there's actually a crack in the firewall that the big block was hiding, so uh, pulling the front clip off so we can fix the crack and uh, repaint the firewall and make a little more room for the injection pump. The paint was stripped off the old firewall to reveal the ugliness. 
Not only did it look bad, but it was also holding moisture and rusting from the inside out. The only way to fix this is to completely cut out all the offending metal and replace it. Our fabricator went to town designing a custom firewall featuring reliefs and a geometric design that would be formed in a steel panel using our Mittler Brothers bead roller and our Pullmax power hammer. The contours add strength as well as style. The design was sketched out onto some 18 gauge steel which was cut to fit in place of the old firewall. One thing to keep in mind is that the bead roller shrinks the overall size of the panel with every relief rolled into it, so you must compensate by starting with an oversized piece. The panel was repeatedly test fitted to the firewall and refined along the way. A second piece was formed to create a clearance notch to provide additional room for the wiring harness by the transmission tunnel. When the fit was acceptable, weld through protective primer was applied to the mating surfaces and the new panel was welded with traditional plug welds and the perimeter was also TIG and MIG welded as needed. A minor grinding operation was used to finish the metal and our firewall fabrication was complete. The next challenge was mounting the dry sump oil reservoir tank. We had seen other Camaros with dry sump lubrication systems and most of them installed the tank right behind the headlight. And this seems like a logical decision, except in our case, the Camaro wears an RS style nose with hidden headlights and the motorized door requires additional real estate in the front fender. The headlight door actuating mechanism had to be redesigned to work around the tank. So in order to get the headlight door to work, I removed the Detroit Speed motor bracket, I flipped the, the motor upside down and I mounted it to the bottom side of the inner fender. And then remaking the rods and making some extensions actually off of the, the motor and the headlight door itself and got the geometry correct in order for the headlight door to operate. In the end, the crew was able to package the tank, plumbing, headlight motor and other items into a tight space behind the fender. The car went into the body shop where the firewall was sanded and filled to clean up any grinding or sanding marks. It was painted with an industrial satin black finish along with the dry sump, tank, and brackets. Back in the mechanic shop, the crew bolted the engine to the T56 six-speed manual transmission and installed it into the Detroit Speed subframe. So the last time we worked on this car with the uh, big block in it, we'd put a center force dyad twin disc in it. Um, and that's got some advantages. It's got multiple types of material on the friction surface, so it uh, doesn't grab too hard, but it's got a lot of surface area, so it can hang on to a lot of power. And a byproduct of all that is it feels relatively stock. The pedal effort's not real high compared to the clutch's holding capacity. Uh, the thing about a dyad clutch, though, is there's so many pieces, they're actually balanced as a unit. So when you go put it back together, you have to make sure to line up all the dots where they balanced it from the flywheel all the way to the pressure plate uh, so that you don't have a vibration problem later on. The installation of the engine was pretty clean as these LT4s are designed to fit in the tight confines of a modern Corvette. So uh, one of the biggest differences between LS engines and LT engines is LTs are direct injected, similar to a diesel. There's no more injectors in the intake runner, so they actually spray right into the combustion chamber. Uh, what makes that most different is fuel pressure. In order to combat the amount of pressure in the cylinder when you're ejecting fuel, you gotta run quite a bit of fuel pressure, which is why there's the injection pump on the back of the engine. That actually steps the fuel pressure up to somewhere between 1,000 and 2,500 PSI, depending on the conditions the engine's running in. Uh, in order to feed that, the pump in the back of the car is pretty similar to what comes in an LS car, but it runs at a slightly higher pressure, somewhere around 80 PSI. Uh, but it's pulse width modulated like the LS cars were, uh, so it only runs as hard as it needs to. And the injection pump is able to bleed off and run only as much as it needs to because it takes fuel and horsepower to turn a pump and make that much pressure. So GM runs it as little as possible, but still looking at a lot more fuel pressure than in the past. 